Hello, this is Dolores, the old lady who's 84 years old but feels like she's 21 inside. And that's because I spend a lot of time with younger people and try not to get too old in thought. And I have a lot of different suggestions for you today. One thing about your finances, there's a 48-hour rule. Don't buy anything until asking, do I really want it and can I afford it? To give you an example, when my boys were small and the Christmas catalogs came, I used to give them a catalog and say, okay, go through it and put a star by everything you want, or by something you want, and of course, at the end of the day, they'd put a star by just about every toy in the catalog. But then, after a few weeks, when it really got to be Christmas, they would limit it down to one or two items. So it's the same thing with us as adults. I found out that if I think I want something and I'm going to order it, and I wait 24 hours, half the time I decide, no, I don't want it, don't need it. And another thing about gifts, I have discovered that sometimes you get more of a benefit out of giving to someone else instead of buying for yourself. Uh, people that you know who are in need, send them a $20 bill in an envelope anonymously or uh, someone you know needs something, buy them, buy them that gift. But you get a lot more fun out of that than buying something for yourself. I also want to give you some ideas for the older people, what you can buy for them. Um, from my own experience, people always ask me, my family at Christmas, what do you want? And I said, well, go to the post office and buy me a lot of those little things with pictures on them. And one son said facetiously, oh, you mean the, help, the uh, criminal wanted list? And I said, no, postage stamps. If you're elderly, you're probably not on the um, computer or email. You're using snail mail. So you could use gifts, ca gift cards, uh, stationery, postage stamps, boxes of greeting cards, notepads, pens, and so forth. And as I always tell my sons, if you really don't know what to get for me, you can always get me, as Fagan said in Oliver Twist, must come a time, 70, when you're old and it's cold and who cares if you live or you die, the one thing that matters is what you may have laid by, money in the bank. And uh, then you can pick out your own gift if they give you a check. Also, for those who have elderly relatives, uh, female, in nursing homes, I've discovered a gift for them. A lot of older elderly ladies have Alzheimer's, and so their family take them stuffed animals, which they like. I had an elderly friend who was 96 and had Alzheimer's, and I sent her money to her daughter to buy her a gift, and she bought her a stuffed animal called Clifford the Red Dog or something, and then the book and sent me a picture of her and I thought I cannot believe this lady 96 years old who used to be a writer had a mind sharp as a tack and now she doesn't but she's enjoying a book and a stuffed animal also the last few years I've discovered another thing that's good is a baby doll because the elderly lady who has Alzheimer's sees that little doll and thinks that it's a child and she's happy. My grandmother had one when she was 90 years old in the nursing home with dementia. And I asked her one time, what is that, Grandma? She says, well, that's Dolores's baby. She, I'm babysitting for her. She's working now. And she also thought that my mother was, uh, my mother was her sister and, and she, she was all mixed up. But anyway, recently I gave those dolls. I went to Kmart and for $10 got a cute little baby doll. You press its tummy and it says several things. It has a cute outfit on. I gave one to my dermatologist who had mentioned, oh, you're in good shape for 84. And I says, no, I'm not. He says, oh, yes, my own mother is 84 and she has Alzheimer's and she doesn't even know me. So I took him one of those dolls one time. And I asked him later how it went over. He says, oh, she loved it. And she kept pressing the tummy so it would make these noises and so forth. And uh, then I got another one for another friend. So for $10 at the Kmart, we can all afford that. And it's amazing what odd things these elderly patients react to. I wouldn't say get a doll for a gentleman who has Alzheimer's, 
but for the ladies, it's good. Another thing about giving gifts, share books that you finished in magazines and um, devotional books and so forth. I know uh, at one point we knew an elderly woman who was very poor. My boys used to go over and visit her and once in a while cut her lawn. And uh, I found out that she would love the daily paper, but she couldn't afford it. So I called them up and sent them a check and paid for a subscription for the newspaper for her for three months anonymously. And um, also you can get gift cards from the grocery store or Kmart or Walmart or any of these places where they might want to shop. And if they're still driving, get them a gift card for Shell or any, any uh, gas station. Also, the main thing that elderly people like is your time. My um, mother used to tell me, oh, my niece comes in and she does the laundry and she cleans the house, but she won't just sit down and talk to me. And that's so important because the elderly get very lonely and um, um, I think that's very important. Now, I want to digress a minute to another way to keep yourself young. I've been going for a year and a half now to the gym three times a week. I do the treadmill and the exercise cycle. I don't do any of the other real complicated machines. But 45 minutes three times a week and uh, lowered my blood pressure and I feel better. I eat better. I just have a better attitude. And uh, But before I leave the house, I lock my purse in the... Uh, trunk of my car and only take a tote bag in. And when you're shopping, you might want to do that too because there's a lot of thieves out there. And if they see your purse in your car and you're gone, they're going to break the window and get in there. Um, another thing too, as we get older, people give us a lot of gifts and we like to keep them out. Statuettes, figurines, uh, vases, candy dishes, etc. My oldest son came over one day and he says, Ma, this looks like an old lady's house. You need to redecorate. And I said, Hey, I am an old lady. Leave me alone. Every time I take one of those knickknacks away, somebody comes in and remembers they gave it to me and says where it is. And um, uh, fortunately, he's my oldest son, he also does something sweet, though. He hides $5 bills all over the house. And um, I'll go in my, to my desk and I'll look at the calendar and there's a $5 bill. Or I will go in my uh, bedroom, look in the jewelry box, there's a $5 bill, and so forth. There's one time, though, he put a $5 bill in the clothes hamper and lately, later he asked me, what did you do with that $5 bill I left in the clothes hamper? I said, what $5 bill? Evidently, the $5 bill when I did laundry went down the drain or something. So be careful where you uh, leave them if you're going to leave money for people. Also, you can take them uh, water, uh, bottles of water or groceries or different things like that when you visit them. Or like my one son just did for me today, he brought me lunch. That was nice. Um, now, getting back to giving to other people, as a grandparent... Um, my one son, when he was in college, I would send him cards and notes every two weeks at least. And at my 80th birthday party, he got up and announced that those cards and notes, snail mail, meant more to him than email, which I don't use, because then if you get lonely, you can take the card out and read it over again. And that's so important for people that are the service people or people that are in college. Another thing I discovered with younger people, I gave one grandson a check one time, and later I asked him, what did you do with it? He says, oh, Grandma, I didn't want to tell you, but I lost it. I can't find it. And I said, well, that's all right. I'll just uh, send you another one and, you know, report that one is lost. And a week later, he called me up. He says, oh, Grandma, good news. I found the check. It was down in between the seats in my front seats in my car. However... There's another grandchild, my granddaughter, Ornella. I can't give her checks because she won't use them. One time I gave her a check when she graduated from college, and later I said, you didn't cash that check. 
She says, oh, Grandma, I don't want to cash that check. You're on a limited income. That was too much. So ever since then, when if I want to give her a gift of cash, it's cash, no checks, because I know she won't use that, but she'll use the cash. And um, uh, another thing I've discovered about family problems, um, Matthew, my grandson, taught me, he's like Switzerland, he's neutral. He loves everybody in the family. He doesn't get involved in any intramural squabbles. And um, he just loves everybody. He doesn't let any little tiffs in the family bother him. And I should do that too. Um, as another son who's married to a psychologist says, don't triangulate. And I didn't realize I was doing this. Uh, triangulating can go anywhere from saying, Mike, did you send your brother Eddie a card for his birthday? Well, that's wrong. You're trying to tell them what to do. Even though you mean it nicely, you're just trying to be a nice mom. But they, they consider it uh, an invasion of their space, and uh, they don't want you doing this. And um, another time, I wrote an one of my articles was called, called The Hovercraft Syndrome, Hovercrafts are ships on the English Channel out of Dover that hover right at the top of the waves. They have some sort of an engine or something. Anyway, I saw those when we went to um, England one time, and it made me realize sometimes I hover around my children, and I can be very uh, nosy. They think nosy or in other words, if your son comes over and says, I bought a new car, you go and you look at it, you admire it. You don't say, well, how much did it cost? Are you sure you can afford it? Or the same way, whatever they buy, whatever they do, you do not find fault with them. Even when one of my sons was skydiving, I thought, oh, I'm not going to say that's too dangerous. I hoped he'd get over it after a while and give it up, which he did. But you have to be very careful with your children, especially, I think, if you have daughters, because they don't like it when you're too nosy into their um, the way they do things, how they cook or how they decorate their houses or whatever. You have to be very careful. Okay, now, some odd things about dryer sheets. Uh, if you have dryer sheets for your laundry, also put them in, put one or two of them in your gym shoes, your Reeboks, and they'll take away any uh, bad foot smell that you have. Another thing I discovered, my one son took me to an old bookstore one time and we bought some magazines, some old copies, old copies of, I think it was Life magazines or magazines that you don't see anymore, but they smelled very musty. So I took a dryer sheet and put the magazines in a plastic bag with a dryer sheet and it took away that bad smell. You can do the same thing with some of the books you have. And um, speaking of gifts, back we've been going back and forth all over the place, but you won't mind, I hope. When you get a gift that's a check or cash, later on, tell the person what you spent it on because it makes it more personal, makes it feel like they really got you something. And um, another thing, too, um, if you give an older grown child a gift for baby furniture or for lawn furniture or something big when they get a house, don't attach strings to it. Don't say, well, you want this one, not that one. And you have to be very careful. Um, another thing, too, if you want to give cash at Christmas, you can usually find these precious little gift boxes in some stores, some uh, stationery stores or whatever. They're just a little tiny box, and you can put the cash in there. It makes it more personal than just giving them a, handing them an envelope with a check-in. And, um, oh, I want to tell you something funny that happened. One of my sons made me up an emergency kit for my car, and it was a huge thing. I mean, a big box of flares and all sorts of things. I wouldn't have the slightest idea of what to use, but if someone else was with me and we had an accident, they would know what to do with it. 
So anyway, I used to call it my coffin because it was so big, it looked like a casket. And a um, number of years ago, I went to buy a new car, and my little grandson was with me. He was about eight then. And uh, we we're getting the new car ready to go out the shop out of the place with it. And uh, my grandson says, Oh, Grandma, don't forget to get the coffin out of your old car and put it in the new one. And, of course, the salesman looked up and he says, What is he talking about? And I said, Well, it's just that emergency kit. But that emergency kit has come in handy several times. Uh, one time my, one of my sons was driving my car and we came across a, a, a couple that were by the side of the road and they needed flares. And another time we came across a driver who needed a new, oh, what's that wheel thing for his, um, a belt for his car. So, anyway, um, I'm going all over the place with this, but I hope it helps you. Oh, another thing, if you ever borrow somebody's car, always fill up the gas tank when you return before you return it. And um, learn your children's favorite foods, like um, my one grandson loves Rice Krispie Treats and maple sugar candy. And for Christmas, I always ordered the one's grandson maple sugar candy from Vermont. And um, another thing, if you have small grandchildren visiting you, in my guest room I have a huge basket full of toys for every age for them to play with, anybody who visits me, that I also keep crayons and paper and pens and blocks and all sorts of things like that. And you can pick up these items real cheap, usually at a garage sale. I love garage sales. Uh, <laughs> another thing, too, when these little guys come to visit you, for instance, I have three grandsons who are like uh, six, eight, and ten. And whenever they come over, I used to have a gift for them. And uh, it gets to be a bit expensive, even if they're garage sale items. So recently what I've been doing, the more they visit, I get gummy bears or alphabet cookies and put in a bag these treats. Each of them has their own plastic bag, and then I put a dollar bill in there too. And last time I didn't have the other treats, so I gave them each a five dollar bill, and you thought it was uh, Christmas and Santa Claus. Also, get to know your, your grandchildren's favorites, whether it's Batman, Spider-Man, Bob the Builder, or SpongeBob SquarePants, or uh, whatever they like, because they appreciate that too. Believe it or not, you can even get gummy bear treats and cookie treats that are for those different categories. And uh, it was so sweet. One day I gave the one child the Batman thing, and I realized after I gave it to him, oops, I should have given him the Spider-Man one. But the little boy, instead of complaining, you got it wrong, he just turned to the other one and said, you want to trade? So children are very, very adaptable to things. Okay, for older people, if you want to eat out, and you're on a strict income, fixed income they call it, buy one entree and split it and you will save calories and probably if you're an older person you don't eat that much anyhow. And um, if you're eating in, you might want to spend one part of one day cooking. My, grand, my mother used to do that. She'd cook a huge amount of something and then put it in different uh, plastic containers in the freezer and take out each one because you don't want to be cooking all the time and you if you're going to cook a little bit you might as well cook a, a bigger amount. I um, I love Fannie Mae candy and uh, my one granddaughter knows exactly which flavors to get me and at Christmas she buys me a huge box with four individual boxes inside and then I put them in the freezer and take out one at a time and I have candy all year long. And, um, oh boy. Now, we're going to talk about gifts. We all get gifts from time to time that we don't want. But we know someone else who would like it. So just put a tag on there from who gave it to you, so you remember, and not give it back to them again. And um, re-gift it, if they're brand new gifts. But be careful, because here again, one Christmas... With five sons, you got to had to make sure when they were young that they all got the same amount of gifts. And I was short one gift for one son. So I went and looked in my husband's cupboard, her dresser, found soap on a rope from Avon. And I thought, oh, 
Aaron will love this. So I wrapped it up and gave it to him. And when he opened it up, he says, Gee, Ma, I remember giving this to Dad last Christmas. So you have to be very careful that you don't re-gift the same gift to the same person. Um, another thing to save money, washing clothes. I always use a cold water rinse. And I learned that from our president who went off shutting off all the lights, Lyndon Johnson, shutting off the electric lights, I think he did. And um, I think that's a good tip. Okay, now, garage sales. Like I say, I love garage sales, but my one son warned me, Ma, don't tell anybody that you got it at a garage sale. Because that's true, they might think it's something that's used. But at garage sales, you can find brand new gifts that people got and didn't want, still in the cellophane wrappers or plastic wrappers. For example, I have a granddaughter who loves English history and collects teapots. And one time, I got a Henry VIII and his wife's teapot for $15 at a garage sale. And I later saw it in a catalog for $50. Another thing is Kincaid collectibles. I got a plate and a teapot and a nativity scene from there for a friend who collects Kincaid stuff. An Elvis fanatic. I have a friend who likes Elvis. And I've got new in the original boxes collector items for her. And um, Just Don't Do is one of my elderly relatives did. Every Christmas she sent my son's gifts <laughs> that she got at garage sales. The reason we found out is they were metal toys, cars and trucks and things, and they wouldn't work. They were battery operated, but the batteries had uh, rusted out and uh, the gift wouldn't work. So be very careful. Don't give anything that's obviously second hand. And... Um, uh, oh, I'll, I'll never forget dollar stores. Family dollar stores are great for gifts. My one grandson, I would take him to the family dollar store and I'd say, you can pick out five items. They used to be they were each a dollar only a piece. So he got five items and he came out of there feeling rich. And he later told his other grandmother, my other grandmother's rich. She has money for presents all the time, which didn't go over too well with the other one. Okay, some other tips for the elderly. I have, as I said, I have a lot of gifts in my house, and different ones have given them to me, and they're very precious, and I figured they might want them back when I die. So on the bottoms of some of the things that relatives gave me, I put in with adhesive tape their name. And... Um, or if they admire something I have and they want it, I put the, their name on the bottom. However, as I'm getting older, I've started giving things away ahead of time so they go to the right person. And um, it's okay because they all know what they're going to get when I die. I eat different items. I made a list one time, and if I give it to them ahead of time, it makes one thing less for me to dust or to keep fine space for. In other words, angels that I inherited from my mother teapots for my collection, and precious moments items. Uh, let's see, I think, oh, oh, another tip, I think mostly for older people. A lot of times people will come up to me at church and they'll say, oh, I love that dress. And I'll open my trap and instead of saying, thank you, oh, this old thing, I've had it for 20 years, and blah, 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 blah. No. and Or don't say, I got it, but it got faded while in, in the sun on a cruise, which I have been known to say. Or don't say, I got this at the family dollar store uh, for $7. Or don't say, it was only $2 at a garage sale. And also don't say, which was true, my friend died and I inherited all her clothes. And uh, you have to be very careful. Just say thank you. And... Um, the only time there's a clarification needed is if you are asked, as I was by one woman at church, how do you dress so well on Social Security? Do you spend all your money on clothes? And I thought, oh boy, I better enlighten her. So I told her the real situation. And uh, I still say when I die and my children go through my closets, they're going to say, 
Oh my goodness, she's had that thing for how many years? It went out of fa fashion and it's back in fashion. Another hint for old people, oh, elderly, we don't like to be called old. I don't like any of those terms they use. Prime timers? Or sometimes I think I've, I've, I've gone by my sell by date or use by date, but I don't want to be reminded of it. I like the people who tell me that I seem younger because I have a young attitude. Another thing, do not get in the habit of, as my pastor used to say, have organ recitals. When you and a bunch of older people get together and they ask how you feel, just say, thank you. You don't need to recite all your aches and pains or the number of doctors you've seen or a list of all your medications. It's good to know all the medications. If you have to go to the hospital, you have to recite them. But don't tell everybody else about it. And uh, just try to keep young. Dress nice, get up in the morning, get your bed made before 9 o'clock in the morning, and uh, get dressed, and get on with your day, and don't get in the habit of watching. I never turn on my TV until the news at 5 p.m. I, I figure I've got more important things to do. I can read a good book or take a walk or something, uh, because life is too short to fritter it away on non-essentials. Also, I want to mention some gifts I received that would be good gifts for you to give your parents or grandparents. One of my sons noticed I was always losing my keys and uh, so he put a Velcro thing up by the kitchen door to hook in a little uh, hook for my keys and the Velcro thing holds the garage door opener so I'd never lose them anymore. Others have given me video collections of the old classic movies. Um, one got me a cell phone Another got me a Presto machine, which if you don't know what it is, you can get emails, you can't send them, but I don't want to send emails anyhow. I want to get them, but if I send them, I'd probably send some that I shouldn't. Because my, my motto is, if you write a letter, wait 24 hours before you mail it. And unfortunately, I guess you can't do that with email. Uh, another thing, uh, little knickknacks, my one son came home one day and he got them at an estate sale or something, little salt and peppers to match a colonial woman who was on my shelf over my kitchen. And I said, how did you remember that that matches? And he said, well, I've been looking at it for all these years. Now that was so sweet, especially for a man, because men usually aren't as observant as women are. Another time, he took me to my hometown to visit just three living people in six cemeteries because at my age there's more people underground than there are above ground. But I enjoyed that so much because my hometown is 400 miles away and I can't go very often. Another thing when they come in and do repairs around the home and one son put safety hooks on my screen doors and uh, they're very important because now if somebody comes I can open the door and stand there with the door hooked, a good hook, and talk to them without them pulling open the door. One time a salesman tried to pull the door right open because those little ordinary latches don't work very well. Uh, another, time, another thing, when they had the birthday party for me on my 80th birthday, one granddaughter made a DVD of it and gave it to me. Others took pictures. And another one, um, even... Uh, Oh, made scrapbook of it. And another granddaughter, I went on trips with her to New England, Canada, a cruise, and I have all those scrapbooks. And whenever I get lonely, I can get those scrapbooks out and relive those wonderful trips we had. The only thing with that granddaughter is, when she got married, she wouldn't let me go with her on her honeymoon trip to Australia. I wonder why. And of course, I'm joking. So anyway, that is enough. And I hope you've gotten some good tips. And I will say goodbye for now and tune in next time. Thank you.